Hi everyone, I'm Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17 released just a week ago. We've been using it full time for that amount of time and a little bit longer if you're a developer. And then later in the week, they released iOS 17.0.1. And then for iPhone 15 models, iOS 17.0.2. I thought we'd talk about that, the overall experience, also your experience based off the YouTube community poll, where at the time of this video, there's an incredible 107,000 votes. I've taken all the information from here. I've gone through most of the comments to see what the overall experience is like to share with you how battery is and much more. But first I wanted to mention a few bits of news as well as some new features that are coming to iOS 17 next. Now we may have a new iPad mini this year, according to DigiTimes, it looks like we might have a new generation iPad mini along with some other iPads launching maybe later this year in October, possibly November. Apple typically does not just have an iPhone event, but rather has iPads later in the year as well. So it would be very unusual not to have iPads, but we may not this year. We just don't know yet, but it seems like we could get a couple different upgrades, but not necessarily a whole event over it. But you never know, we could be in for a surprise. Also, if you've been looking forward to playing games on your new iPhone 15, Resident Evil Village is coming out on October 30th. Apple showed this off at, at the event, showed that the new A17 Pro in the 14, or in the iPhone 15 rather, can actually play those games. Some iPads can play them as well, but those will be coming out later next month. Now, as far as upcoming features, while well, we're waiting for a few different things, if we go to Apple's website, on the iOS 17 website specifically, we've been waiting for the journal app. Apple actually showed this at WWDC and talked about how it would be coming later this year. It could be coming with iOS 17.1 or even later than that. There's also additional features we're expecting that they've listed here. There's a huge list of features that are coming soon that aren't here yet that are coming later. Airdrop over the internet. So not just airdrop when you're sending a file, but if you send a file to someone and you need to go because it's a larger file, it will continue transferring that file over the internet. Instead, it will switch to cellular or Wi-Fi or whatever's available. That'll be coming later on. Also music gets some updates coming soon. And that specifically has to do with collaborating on playlists with friends and family. And there's also supposed to be a new playlist that allows you to make favorites is so instead of just having maybe one that's curated for you, you can create your own favorites playlist as well. So maybe we'll see that very soon. Again, 17.1 is when we could actually see that. If you're using Apple news and maybe listening to an audio story, we'll have the option to actually play and pause that within the widget later this year. And also with Apple fitness, there will be a way where you can actually change the focus of the audio. Now, this is something that we have been able to do in previous betas. At least I saw it available and fitness doesn't allow you to do it just yet. So you'll be able to focus maybe on the voice, the music, or adjust that to your preference. Also something else that's really nice that I used in the betas that isn't here just yet is Apple's ID proximity sign in similar to when you set up an iPhone for this first time, you actually bring the phones close together and it will actually transfer your information. You can do this after the fact with Apple ID on a different device. So maybe you sign out of your iCloud account and your settings go up to the top and you've signed out of that. If you have, you can actually sign in quickly by bringing them close together. Additionally, more will sync across iCloud in the future as well. Things such as text message forwarding that you have set up, send and receive accounts and SMS filters across devices. All of those things are coming very soon. Also, we're still waiting for, and this feels like forever, next gen CarPlay. We're actually seeing it in some cars, but CarPlay is just not rolled out to where we're seeing a completely redesigned version of it. So maybe we'll get that soon. Also, PDFs will have autofill capability in notes. So if you put maybe a PDF, you open it up on your phone, it doesn't necessarily have to be in notes, it can be elsewhere, you'll actually gain autofill for your information. That's something that's built into iOS. So I'm not sure why it's not yet available for PDFs, but that's something coming up later. Also, another change has to do with messages that's coming soon. And specifically where this year we can actually add stickers where you can maybe add a sticker to a message here, just drag and drop that you'll be able to do this through tap back as well, according to Apple. So press and hold there's tap back. We should have some stickers that show up there. Now they haven't said they've discontinued this, but it's not available with iOS 17 or 17.0.1 or 17.0.2. So we should have that as well as a catch up arrow to go back to where we've missed in the conversation. Maybe we have a large group text, a little arrow will show up and that actually was in earlier betas. You could tap it, bring you up to the top of the conversation where you left off and continue from there instead of having to figure out where you were last.
Also, one other thing we thought we'd have quite a while ago is contact key verification for iMessage. So if we swipe over here, you'll see Apple actually talked about it on December 7th of 2022, but they never actually released it. It will help you verify who you're speaking with to make sure it's actually the person they say they are. So that's something coming a little bit later, along with additional security updates. Most of those have been released, just not the contact key verification. So lots of things that we're expecting very soon that we haven't seen just yet. So hopefully we'll see that maybe with some surprise features as well. Now, iOS 17.1 beta one is expected this week. In fact, it was expected last week. The previous two versions of iOS, iOS 15 and iOS 16, we actually had an update the week that we actually had the release of those versions. So to not have a release just yet is a little odd, but I would expect it maybe tomorrow. Today's a holiday for many people. And because of that, I would expect that the 26th maybe is when we'll see that, but also we have the release of Mac OS 14 Sonoma on the 26th. So the public version comes out tomorrow, depending on when you're watching this video. So I'll have a full video about that, of course, but we're expecting that. So we could have a lot of different updates this week, not just iOS, but Mac OS, maybe even the next beta version of watch OS and more. Hopefully they'll make some changes to that as well. Now, if you need a new charger for your iPhone, that's where today's sponsor comes in anchor. Since Apple doesn't include a charger in the box, I actually use these anchor nano chargers all the time. The anchor nano 20 watt is something I use and I use it alongside their USB C cables as they're just super nice and convenient and usually a little longer than the ones you can get elsewhere. Additionally, they have these really nice new power banks. This is a 10,000 milliamp hour power bank to allow you to charge on the go. So it's got a built in connector. Just plug it into the bottom of your iPhone like this. It will start charging and it actually gives you a status on the front of the battery pack. You can plug it in and charge it through this as well as it's two way. And of course it has active shield to help keep everything intact as far as the overall dynamic temperature sensors in here as well. Additionally, if you want something a little bit more compact, there's another charger here as well. That's 5,000 milliamp hours. This particular charger will power on the go again, plug it into the bottom with USB C charges the phone. You can charge through the side, but also charge through here as well. They're two way. So that's super convenient. And of course this one's much more compact and it matches the latest phones. And this is the Anchor Nano Power Bank. And both of them charge pretty fast. The 10,000 milliamp hour power bank charges up to 30 watts where the smaller one charges at 20 watts. So plenty of power to charge everything at about 50% in just 30 minutes or so. I'll leave a link in the description where you can check out the entire Nano lineup for 2023. Be sure to check it out if you're interested. Now with iOS 17, we've been running this for a while and I ran it for a very long time on my iPhone 14 Pro Max. So I thought we'd talk about that a little bit. Now we had been talking about camera improvements and there really hasn't been any difference. As you can see here from iOS 17 to iOS 17 beta eight, there's very slight improvements, but I think it's much better at least for the 14 pro max. I'm not sure really about the other phones as well. Overall though, I think they improved the camera and they definitely improved it on the 15 pro max. However, the focal length is not improved as the sensor doesn't allow you to get closer, but you can zoom in and the zoom is actually nice and clear. So many people have asked me about that. And of course I'll have a full review, but let's spin this around here. You can only get so close before it switches to macro. So if I get a little bit closer now, it's blurry at about six or eight inches or so. So if I back out, zoom in it two times, it's nice and clear. So there's really no benefit as far as the focal distance here with the 15 pro max, but it seems to be fine, but overall cameras seem to be good, much better than they were at the start of the launch of the 14 pro max. Now, as far as connectivity with iOS 17 and iOS 17.0.1, it seems quite reliable, especially on the newer phones, which actually have an upgraded modem in them. But while I was using the 14 pro max, it definitely seems better in areas. I would typically have it drop. It stayed connected. Phone calls stayed connected and it was much, much better. And of course we'll talk about battery life here in just a moment, but battery life in general has been pretty good, but much better with iOS 17.0.1 is that fixed most of the issues that people had with that. So we'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. And there are still a few bugs as there always will be with software, but I wanted to mention a couple things such as the notification bug is still here. Some people said they can't replicate this and you have to do it a couple times sometimes, but most people say they have this. It's not a huge deal as it doesn't affect usability, but it's something that that's in the way. Generally, 
the overall OS is very fast, but has occasional stutters or lag. Depending on the age of the device, if you go back to maybe an iPhone 11, some people see this here and there, a restart typically fixes that. Also, some people are seeing blank widgets or widgets that aren't updating properly. As you can see here, 75 or 76 degrees. If we go in, give it a moment to refresh, of course it refreshes, but it didn't refresh the widget until just there a second ago. So there's definitely some issues there. Not a huge deal. We've seen that before and probably the number one complaint, which this is a good sign because there's not a whole lot of issues is that if we go into settings, we go to our sound and haptics and our new text tones. Most people say that the text tones just aren't loud enough. So if you're using these, the tone is not loud enough. Apple needs to increase the volume or give you the option for it. Many people say they're just too quiet where the ringtones are fine, but the volume of the text tones are not. That's probably the number one complaint I'm seeing. So that's actually a really good sign that also goes along with notifications, not playing for some at all. So that's a problem for some people. Obviously that's a big deal, especially if you're waiting for notifications to come in, they might show up on your watch, not on your phone or make a noise there. So they need to fix that. That's definitely an important bug, but most of it seems to be pretty reliable, especially after 17.0.1 with the iPad, that keyboard bug I had before has gone away. So it's instantly active. If I go into maybe YouTube, it will play right away. It seems to be much better than it was before. So they might've fixed that with 17.0.1, but either way it's gone away completely for me and seems to be much better using the magic keyboard. So that's good. I haven't heard that complaint yet from anyone either. Now, as far as overall performance, well on the 15 pro max, it's nice and fast. Of course, with the 14 pro max, it was always nice and fast. Most people are reporting that in general, it's very quick then there's occasional stutters. So if you go over and maybe you're scrolling and it activates ProMotion at 120 Hertz, sometimes it will stutter a little bit or bringing down the notification center. It will stutter a little bit. This I think just will be fixed with software in the future, but is an issue for quite a few people. So I know some people were nervous about that, but a reboot seems to fix it instantly. So it could be an issue where they need to optimize the Ram of the device. Maybe it's just got a little leak of memory and they need to fix that. That gets worse over time, but on the 15 pro max, I really haven't seen that at all, but that doesn't surprise me as it's a faster processor. As far as heat, well, many people have said that the phone just gets hot while you're handling it. I haven't experienced that at all while it's charging. Doesn't seem to be abnormally warm. Yes, it gets warm if you're wireless charging, but it doesn't seem any hotter than most phones. And I'll show you that with the thermal camera. So we've had the screens on, on both. We haven't been doing a whole lot on the 14 pro max or 15 pro max. Let me go ahead and get the thermal camera with the thermal camera on the iPhone 15 pro max. We're at about 30.2 degrees Celsius. If we move over to the 14 pro max, we're at about 30.1 or 30.2 degrees, maybe even a little bit warmer, 30.4 degrees. And in Fahrenheit, I saw it go up to about 90.4 degrees Fahrenheit on the other phone. Well, now it's cooled down a little bit. So it just depends. It's at 88.9 or 89 degrees Fahrenheit. So it goes back and forth, but it really doesn't feel any warmer than the other phone. They're not warm to the touch. Just my the heat from my hands, making them a little warm, but that's pretty good for me. I really haven't had an issue there. And now some people may have seen that I dropped this on Twitter. I dropped it on a tile floor and I wanted to show you that. So not a big deal. Didn't shatter the glass or anything. It did chip the paint or chip the PVD coating off the titanium. You can't feel it. It's not actually something you can feel. You can just see it. And it's a little bit of a blemish there. Not an issue. Didn't crack the glass seems to be wearing up here as well. Although I didn't drop it there. So I don't know if this is normal wear, but I just put it in my pocket, put it on the table and that's about it. But I wanted to see how durable it is over time. So we'll have to wait and see. Now let's talk about battery life, battery life on the iPhone 14 pro max with iOS 17.0.1 is what you would expect. Basically the same as iOS 16.6.1 or 16.7. For those wondering, if we go to battery, battery health and charging, you'll see the maximum capacity is at 87%. Now, something that we get with the 15 pro max that they really need to bring over to the older phones. And there's no reason they couldn't is if we go to battery, battery health and charging again, go to charging optimization. We have the option to change this to an 80% limit. If you want to do that, some people will definitely want to do that. They should bring it over to the older phones. There's no reason you couldn't just have that. The same is true with the cycle counts at 87% on the 14 pro max. After using it full time for a full year, I had 308 cycles. Apple has brought this into general and then about, and at the bottom of about, you can see the manufactured date of the battery 
first use, and now we're at four cycles. So I've been using this full time. It gives the cycle count. Again, there's absolutely no reason Apple can't bring that to these phones. As far as battery life, I'll share it from the 15 Pro Max, but I'm doing this to actually test it as well. But if we go into our battery life, you'll see I've been using it. Well, today's day four. If we go back yesterday, it's not great battery life for me. Four hours and 31 minutes of screen active time, seven hours and 24 minutes of screen idle time. I reset all my settings before I actually transferred everything. I've had to re-log in, reinstall a ton of apps. It's still not getting much better. The day before, three hours and 22 minutes. So maybe I'll start over, but it says Safari is using 24% and I don't have anything in Safari. So I'm not sure why I haven't been using Safari at all. I just have the two pages that I showed before. There's no reason it should be using that much power. So I'm not sure what that's about, but it definitely is. So that could be a bug that they need to fix, but my battery hasn't been great. It certainly was not great on iOS 17 betas for me as well, as you can see all the other days. The last time I used it to 100%, I got four hours and 15 minutes of screen active time. So it's really not great for me. I think it's iOS 17, whatever it's doing, but also the newest phone, some people have said gets super hot. I haven't experienced it. And they say it uses a ton of power because it can use double the wattage up to 14 watts. Again, I don't know if that's really a case for me as it really seems no different. So I guess that's good in one way that it's not different, but I definitely expect more from this as far as battery. Now, as far as if you should install iOS 17.0.1 or iOS 17.0.2, if you're nervous about it, maybe wait until iOS 17.1 one is out as that's when they typically fix all of the major bugs that they've had with it, hopefully optimize battery and more, but we just don't know until we actually use it. If you're nervous about using it, stay on iOS 16.7 as long as you can. That will give you those security updates, but you will need to update to gain those security updates in the future, unless you're on older supported devices, such as the iPhone 10, 8, or 8 Plus. So Apple will not be releasing probably any other updates for different devices. But as far as what you had to say in the YouTube community poll, let's take a look at some of your comments. And before we take a look at the individual ones, you can see here from Sakshem Agrawal 2041, you'll see he says, hi, I'm using the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And after updating to 17.0.1, the battery life has been absolutely outstanding. It is back to the same levels as iOS 15. So I'm seeing this over and over with 900 comments. The majority of them are saying good battery life. Tomato Blast 7539 says, I've been running iOS 17 on my 13 Pro from the day it was released, and iOS 17.0.1 was definitely an upgrade. Overall, the smoothness has been better or comparable to 16.6.1. The battery did suffer with 17.0, however, 17.0.1 significantly improved it for some reason. In general, I'm really pleased with the upgrade and have found no major bugs. Mike Powers 7207 says, I've been on iOS 17 since it was released and updated to 17.0.1 when it was released. This is for both my iPhone 13 and 10R. Since my upgrades, I have seen my battery life go down on both phones. It's still good on my 13, a bit less so on my 10R. I haven't noticed any bugs or unusual behavior from either phone, and everything is working properly on both of them. Gavish Rajwar 1915 says mixed feelings on my iPhone 10s running iOS 17. The animations are a lot smoother than on iOS 16, but the app opening speeds seem to be slower now. The phone took a sweet time to finish processing the new update, but now it's all nice and cool, loving the new features of iOS 17. One bug I forgot to mention, sometimes the lock screen goes all black except the bottom bar when the lock screen charging animation appears while charging the phone. Raghav VJ said, iOS 17.0.1 fixed my battery issues with iOS 17.0. Now I get around 7 to 10 hours of screen on time on my 13 Pro, which is definitely nice. Also, performance is okay, but I've experienced the general scrolling, etc. feeling a bit slower. Apart from that, great update. So that's everything so far with iOS 17, iOS 17.0.1, and iOS 17.0.2. It seems like a solid update, much better than in previous years with iOS 16, but there's still a little ways to go. But overall, most of the complaints are pretty minor at this point. It's good that they've focused on battery life, and hopefully we get those battery features from the iPhone 15 series on the iPhone 14 and older. Again, there's really no reason we shouldn't. If you found anything I haven't mentioned in previous iOS 17 videos, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And if you picked up an iPhone 15 and you're having issues with it getting hot or anything else, I'd love to hear from you as well. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.